And our next T-minus five talk is Joy Weaver, so give it a hand. Okay, a few years ago, I was in a waiting room and I happened to run into a friend and the talk turned to space exploration as it will if you talk to me for more than five minutes. I was uh, trying to explain the basics behind the Drake equation to my friend and he got a funny look on his face and said, well, if we're never going to meet any intelligent life, then why would we bother exploring space? Well, it's a good thing I was waiting for a therapy session because I needed it after that. <laughs> Now, it baffles me that some people actually need to be persuaded that space is interesting, but apparently they do. And in talking with a lot of my friends, most of them don't engage with the space community on a day-to-day -day basis. They don't engage with it on a yearly basis. And there are certain obstacles that I've discovered keep people from being interested in space. And we need to get past those when we're talking to them. The main obstacles that most people face are unrealistic expectations, a disconnect from reality, and an exaggeration of the risks of space travel. Now, the first one is pretty, e pretty easy to understand. We go to movies and we see spacecraft and they look great. They're cool, they move fast, they go between star systems in days. They're beautiful and they're completely impossible. <laughs> and then they go and see actual spacecraft and they look like tinker toys in comparison. Despite the fact that they're obviously better because they're real. They don't look quite so shiny, and people feel disappointed. I mean, the, t the, I the ISS is amazing, and it looks like it was made of Lincoln Logs compared to the Enterprise. What they think we'll find in space? Aliens want to trade with us. Aliens want to kill us. Aliens who want to sleep with us, sometimes all three. What we actually find in space? Um, not quite as interesting to them. We find rocks. We find ice. We find water. And if we're really, really lucky, maybe someday something like bacteria. Maybe. And that'll be a good day. <laughs> but they don't understand why these things are the really exciting things to find. They want to see green men. Part of the problem comes from the misconceptions from irresponsible press headlines. I'm sure everyone saw that first headline a few days ago. Oh yeah, there's a new state of matter, therefore lightsabers. No. <laughs> <clears throat> People are really disconnected from launches. They don't watch uh, spacewalks. I mean, the Olympic torch went on the spacewalk this morning. How many people outside of this group actually watched it? Probably not that many. They, they don't see things happening. They're unfamiliar with the players in the game. They'll know NASA. They know Russia has a program, but they don't know any of the other companies, the other countries' programs. They don't, they sure as heck don't know the commercial space people. You could, you could spew those names all day and they don't get it. The problem is they think that space is irrelevant to their current life. They don't think about you know, how do they get their phones and the networks that support that? How do they get the medical tech that, that makes life easier? And then we move on to the exaggerated sense of risk. And big disasters get big headlines. Small, steady success usually doesn't. So people see what they perceive as a tiny benefit at a risk of loss of human life, and they don't think that it's worth it. Now, these no, people know that space is dangerous. The problem is they think the dangers are explosions, Asteroids, once again aliens. I think people think that Michael Bay directs the space-time continuum. <laughs> and uh, that's it's just clearly not true. There's a, a misunderstanding of how science happens. People typically think that there's a eureka moment and that that leads directly to the creation of a device with immediate practical application. Well, of course, that's not how science works. Science is a slow process with lots of mistakes and dead ends because that's how you find things out. But that doesn't make quite as good of a story, and people th tend to think that it's only dead ends, and they don't see where it's leading us. <clears throat> now, the key to break past these obstacles is to reach out in really specific ways. Invite people to launches. Send links to, to use streams and, and live broadcasts of events. You know, invite people to watch the ISS with you. Make it easy for them to get involved. Share your excitement. I mean, it's easy to get excited here, but in day-to-day -day life, it's, it's encouraged to play things cool and not geek out so much. Well, to hell with that. <laughs> get excited and people will get excited along with you. And finally, make it daily. There's always something interesting going on in space, whether it's private space, whether it's NASA, could be Ros Roscosmos, could be JAXA, anything. Something is happening. And if people see that something is actually happening every single day, it's going to become more relevant to them. We can't win everyone over. But we can get a few, 
And those few might just be enough to make us a truly space-faring race in the future.